David Edward and Omar Medrano discuss Omar's book, What If It Did Work? Omar, how are you? I'm doing amazing. I'm doing fantastic. I'm just honored to be here with you. <laughs> well, I'm honored to have you. And you and I, we, we kind of have moved in some of the same circles. You're um, what we would call an entrepreneur, I think. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, uh, but you've done something that I haven't done, which is you have taken kind of your life experiences and the wisdom that you learned being a franchise owner and, and being a successful business person. And you have written a book called What If It Did Work, which is a brilliant name, by the way. Why, thank you. I, uh, the original um, title was supposed to be Make It Happen, but just last second, it just hit my editor and me. And we're like, yeah, that we always ask, we always focus on the negative. We, we never focus on literally asking, let's do it. Yeah. Why can't it work? What if it did work? But, but that, that's what's so brilliant because, you know, everyone has ideas and then you know, and most of us don't follow up on them. But then the question, if, you, if you've got that one big idea that just sticks around and if you don't follow up on it, what if it did work? Right. That, it, it's a brilliant title. And I assume the book is equally brilliant after you turn the cover. Is that right? Oh, completely <laughs> <laughs> from top to top to bottom. Uh, the, the, the back of the book has has yours truly pictured on it. But I have to say, I look way better. All my promo material is like three, four years old, but not not because I'm I'm one of those people that uses filters. Just I've been too lazy to update. But literally, I weigh more. I look <laughs> horrible. So I'm not doing it to look younger. I actually look better these days. Yeah, it's funny as we get older, and I I I've got the gray beard. I might be, I might be a little ahead of you there. It, it's amazing how yeah, a photo from like three years ago, we think we look all you know young, and at the time, you know, we didn't think it looked that great. But it's you know hindsight, yeah, I, right? Yeah, I, I wasn't trying to look myself younger. The the, the <laughs> picture in the back back of the book, I'm. I'm the ripe young age of 45 compared to now 49. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, now I'm still I'm still up on you a little bit, but that's okay. All right. So, Omar, wh what did it take to write a book like this? Uh, what What did it take? Well, for me, I've always I, I'm a failed journalist. I've, I've got two degrees in journalism. Broadcast journalism means I can write for at the eighth grade level. That's what America <laughs> can understand. Everybody's like, write a book, write a book, Omar. Write what if it did work? And I'm like, no, no, because I always I wasn't good enough. I had that little voice inside my head. I'm not I'm not Stephen King. Chuck Palahniuk, my favorite author, writer of the Fight Club. I read all his books. I'm like, I can't be like him. There's no way I'm not worthy because all I focused on was fiction. I can't write something like that. That's a masterpiece. And then it hit me one day. Wow, there'll never be. There's only one Stephen King. There's only one Chuck Connick. There's only one R.L. Stein. But you know what? There's only one Omar Medrano. And the only thing I need to focus on is I need to be the best version, the best author, the best father, just the best version of Omar Medrano that's out there. And that, and then, and you decided the the way that was going to come about is by putting some of your business knowledge down into a book. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I it, it's sort of at the very beginning an infomercial to the franchise I, I own because I had these delusions of grandeur that it would be like like them promoting the book because while well, they're in it, Entrepreneur Magazine listed them in the book, but it wasn't that way. I, I felt like I was sure. Sharon Lecter and Robert Kiyosaki, they got help from Amway. That was actually a self-published book. And guess what? It got caught on fire. They weren't with Amway, just Amway loved it. So I'm like, okay, well, there's a thousand franchisees. You know, my franchise will help me sell it. But it it never came to that fruition. No, nobody in my franchise, well, a couple of franchisees listened to my podcast, bought my book. They're my supporters. But when it comes to the, the brand out in Dallas, crickets. They, they won't even be on my podcast. They won't even acknowledge. They won't even say thank you for, for all the work. Well, uh, yeah, okay. Sounds, sounds like there's a story there. I don't know. If oh, I'm... there's always a story. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. I, I've, I looked at the book, and it's doing pretty well. It's been out about 16, 17 months. Come on, April 2021. Um, but it's, I mean, people, you're getting 
good reviews. You don't have a single bad review, and you got a lot of reviews. And I, I, I had one single bad review, believe it or not. But it, it was a hater that that they 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 took it down. Bizarre stuff when you're you're single. Yeah. If, if anybody's single out there, you'll the the dating world is crazy when you get to be a certain age. You, you think it's nuts <laughs> when you're young, but yeah. Um, she wanted to look like an ex girlfriend of mine that I actually wrote the book in her apartment and it, it was just a horrible review she actually because to be on amazon to do a review you have to open up an account so this woman opened up a fake account just to write a negative review which which she took down but yeah that and, and it bothered me because yeah. well, well thank you for purchasing the book <laughs> thank, thank, thank you in that aspect but why are you going to try to tear someone down yeah Hey, sales a sale though, right? Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> why, it's funny, like NWA when in the eighties, people were buying their CDs to for a big uh, CD burner, and they asked them, "Did it bother you?" And they're like, "No," because it was a sale. If I can get a million people, they hate me. <laughs> they want to ban the book, but they'll buy it. That's right. Then by all means, let's ban this. Let's burn this. Hey, yeah. If you're going to burn it, you got to have it, right? <laughs> exactly. I'll, I'll help toss it. Let's let, let's buy some cases. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So so what is so what what's what's the crust of the book? What does someone get out of reading? Um, what if it worked? What if it did work? It, it, if me, I was a guy. I was such an introvert. That growing up, the Terminator spoke more words than I did in elementary, junior high, and high school. They had me in ESOL, English for Speakers of Another Language. As you can tell, either Dade County, Miami-Dade County public schools are so amazing at teaching me English, or I was just an introvert. <laughs> I couldn't speak. Exactly. My junior high principal told me it'd be a cold day in hell the day I graduated <laughs> college. And he was right. Yeah. It snowed. I graduated from LSU, Louisiana State University, first time in 30-something years. And it snowed that day. So he was a Nostradamus. The thing <laughs> is, if I can overcome fear, so can you. You can quit sitting on the sidelines. Quit. Time goes by fast. Quit being fearful of looking bad. The worst pain that will be out there is that fear of regret, that fear of being sick, that fear of wishing you had one opportunity. We all were made for greatness. So do great things. Go for it. Interesting. So where did that, what, what if it did work? Where'd that title come from? We were just brainstorming. Uh, before, the reason why I make it happen was uh, during the 2008 economic meltdown, my ex-wife and I, my business, former business partner, we quit corporate America. We were doing the franchise thing, and we were, everything was hurting. And we had, I had, we had two little, two young daughters. They were toddlers at the time, and she said, "Make it happen." So every video that mm -hmm. I would do, or every, yeah. that would be my catchphrase. What if it did work? Was we, we just did? That was the common theme. Is what if it did work? What if you did ask out? that amazing woman that you had a crush on what what if you created that side hustle what if you wrote that book you know what what if you're living in your car in england and you realized you were worthy and you you wrote a book and you you created a series of of a, a school of wizards now I, I never read <laughs> Harry Potter, but that's an amazing story. And not for religious reasons or anything. It's it's because I'm almost 50. And when the books came out, you know, it, it was way yeah. past my my target audience. Right, right, right. Well, that's that's, that's fascinating. So how long did it take you to write this book? 48 years. <laughs> <laughs> good. It, 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 good. It, it took you like that? No, it, yes. it only took um <laughs> it, it took less than 30 days, but but I had to rewrite the book. So oh, okay. it probably took less. Yeah, because it was an ode to, uh, I, at the time, the, the woman that I, I wrote the the book at her place in Las Vegas, it was a woman I grew up with elementary and junior high and high school that I had a major crush, <clears> and <throat> I finally asked her out. So it was more like a sales book. One of your, one of your teachers or uh... – no, no, I grew up with her. It was my neighbor. I I'm hope kidding. I'm my, kidding. No, yeah, she – 
I, she would be a, a, a great grandmother. I, th I think all my teachers are, are long gone. <laughs> yeah. So am I, yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. So what does someone get from reading this book? They'll, they'll get, they'll get it's inspired. They'll get motivated to, to finally do something with their life to, you know, quit focusing on when you go down a, a deserted highway and you see a, a car that ran into a telephone pole, you're like, why, why did that happen? And it's because the car blew out and what you focus on, you get, you ask your friends that are single, what do you want in a relationship? Not, I don't want a narcissist. I don't want bipolar. I don't want drama. I, they'll give you the laundry list of everything that they don't want. And it's finally, okay, we know what you don't want. We got it. What do you want? Nobody can really answer what they want. They only know what they don't want. And unfortunately, if that's the only thing you know, that's what you're going to focus on and that's what you're going to get. Yeah, I, th I think that, and, and you said it, the, the the things you focus on are the things you get and and it it's not and it, it's it's you know a law of attraction whatever all that but yeah so if you focus on okay i, I don't want a neighbor who plays their stereo at, at 3 a.m you're going to get a neighbor that plays their stereo at 3 a.m i mean it's just it's, it's exactly right? yeah it, it, exactly and, and when i i mean law of attraction the law of attraction works that you know the power of intentions the power of yeah, clarity power, yeah, exactly. but what the universe says is like okay, now go work for it. What are you going to do to get it? Right. And that's what a lot of people, a lot of people bought their poster boards and they're putting the Playboy Mansion and they're putting all these pictures up in these Lambos and like, I'm a great guy. Things are going to change. I can feel it. If if that was the case, we'd all have washboard ads. We'd be living in the mansion, <laughs> and we'd all be driving Lambos. True. I, I might have washboard ads, but I can't, I can't tell. There's too much in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we all do. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right. Exactly so we all do. <laughs> so the book's been out for almost a year and a half. Did anything surprise you about, about the release of the book? Yes. Um, that It became an Amazon bestseller for the first three or four weeks. And I I mentioned it on videos that it was the Westchester Book Club. And Westchester is a neighborhood in Miami that I, I, I grew up from. And what happened was everybody that I grew up with, and like a, a bunch of people from my junior high and high school, people that I grew up with, uh, bought it on the pre-sale. And they yeah. kept on buying it. And it, it touched me because, you know, before I moved away from Miami to Louisiana, because I thought Miami sucked and, until I realized, hey, it's it's really me. Yeah, yeah. Now I got a brother that lives in Miami. It it, it kind of sucks, but it's also not. No, oh, it, it does. It, yeah, it does. But it's it what know. it is. It's kind of scary. well. I'm looking. It it's still number thirty one in business franchises a year and a half after release. I mean, that's so you're on you're on one of the Amazon bestseller lists, one of the top one hundred lists. Well, still, it, it's the reason why my book's still on the list is because. You always have to market yourself, market, 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 promote, 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 whatever it is. I'll get up on the stage and I'll, I'll talk about the book. I'm on your stage. I'm on this podcast and we're discussing the book on my podcast, on my videos, word of mouth. I tell people I'm not writing this book because I, I, I want to be flying on a private jet. I wrote this book originally to help out people. If it'll get get one person to change their life, then to me it's a success. If it's two people, three people, four people, five people, and it creates a movement, and there's plenty of catchy <clears throat> quotes, people recite the quotes to me. That's fine and dandy, but who cares about that? We can train a parent to do that. What I want to hear is I love to hear the stories that I created the side hustle. I created my life. I found my soulmate, et cetera. I made my life happen. Nice. Very nice. So, so what, I mean, the book is a self-advice, but let's specifically talk about, let's say so that someone who thinks they have a book like this in them, a business help book, right. Or a motivational book. Um, what advice would you have for someone who, who wants to, you know, create a work like the one you created? It's easy. Everybody focuses on the goal in mind. Everybody wants to write war and peace. Everybody wants to write gone with the wind whether it's to run a marathon, whether it's to eat an elephant, whether it's to write a book, what you do is it's the, the process you first start. Yeah. You start small. 
and you keep on start from writing a book, you go from one page, one paragraph, one sentence, one word, instead of saying one day, one day, one day, wrong. When you keep on saying wrong, uh, one day you're lying to yourself. But if you just do a little bit at a time, you can knock out a hundred pages easily yeah. in a hundred days. Mm -hmm. And, and and don't say I want a 500 pager. Just start with one page and right. go from there. That's right. It's like anything else, like digging a hole, man. I mean, you want a 10 foot hole, you got to start with that first. I, I know, but if you yeah. think about a 10 foot hole, you're yeah. like, holy smokes. I'll never do it. Exactly. I think that start. Yeah. yeah. Hey, let me see. Let me go with one, one sh dig of the shovel and then two and then three and then four. And then you get that process going. It, it always hurts starting anything, writing a book. The second book took took just it took less than ninety days as well. It took a little longer to get out there because my editor's husband's fighting like, ha has health issues right now, and I'm not like Andale, 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 let's <laughs> go. But it, it's it's like that, you know. It, and if you ask, it only took um, Sylvester Stallone. I for I think like one weekend to write Rocky. But he had to start. Once you start, the process becomes easier and easier. Yeah, I think I think that's I, I've heard that story too. I think that that's true. So, and and I agree. You know, the hardest thing about writing a book is writing that next word, and pretty soon you've got them all written. But you just got to do you know it. What? Don't don't focus on saying, "Hey, I I, I want to be <clears throat> some you know one of the top art artists." Just focus on being the best version of you. Yeah. You know, there, I can't say I want to be the next Anthony Robbins or the next Grant Cardone and, and or, or the next Zig Ziglar in business development. All, all I can focus on is being the best version of myself. Right. I think that's true. Be true to yourself. Absolutely. All right, Omar. Well, look, it's been an absolute joy talking to you. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, we, we have the same view of Miami, but I'm still a lot closer to it than you are. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my friend, I'll see you. All righty, brother. Take care. Bye. Thank you for watching. Please consider hitting the subscribe button.